What's up, Shepherd Youth? Uh, this is Caleb, and we're going to be starting our blog, which we're going to get out to you Monday through Friday, every single week until we get back to, um, to, to our normal services and the normal D groups. Uh, but basically, our blog is going to give you three things uh, every day, Monday through Friday, and, and that's how you can stay healthy, how you can be helpful, and how you can have fun. And what I'm going to film right now is a way to be healthy. We're going to go through a devotional um, each day, and we're going to go through a devotional called Facing Anxiety. And you don't even need to download the devotional. If you just watch these videos, um, you'll actually go through the whole entire devotional with us in, in just about a week's time. So just go ahead and listen to the videos, and I'm, I'm going to start this right now. Um, but, but once again, I'll make clear that we're going to have a, a video every day. Um, and then a little helpful thing you can do to, to be helpful in your family and your community and also a way to just have fun. But let's read this devotional together called Facing Anxiety. It says, everybody has it. Listen to me very closely. Everybody deals with anxiety. Everybody. Some of us are better at coping or hiding it. Some of us deal with higher levels than others, but everybody experiences it. So if you've been feeling like you're crazy because you're constantly struggling with anxiety, you can stop being anxious about how anxious you are. It's a normal thing. And the reason, I'm so, uh, the reason I so confidently declare that everybody has anxiety is because God hired, hardwired us with this mental state into our human brains. You see, anxiety is actually one of your brain's greatest tools for self-preservation. In other words, it keeps you alive. Anxiety was designed as a response to the threat of some sort. For example, if you were walking through the woods and suddenly came across a gigantic grizzly bear, to make it worse, he's also carrying a flamethrower. That would be awesome if that actually happened and I saw that. I don't even know if I'd be anxious, I'd just be in awe. A grizzly bear, that, sorry, I got distracted. To make it worse, he's also carrying a flamethrower. You would experience a sudden jolt of anxiety. Your brain would send all sorts of signals to your body, telling it it's time to either fight for survival or run like crazy. Your body tenses, your heart rate and breathing increase, and you're ready to do whatever it takes to survive. God built this tool into our brain so that we could escape these well-armed bears and keep ourselves safe. And that way, anxiety is actually a gift from God to the human race. The problem is that many of us experience in our modern so the problem many of us experience in our modern society, uh, where bears and flamethrowers are a rare sighting, is that this tool of our brains has been hijacked, and now the threats that trigger our anxiety are on social media. They're in the classroom. They're at home. And frankly, a lot of the time, they actually exist only in our minds. We imagine a threat, and our brain and our body respond as if it were actually danger. For some of us, we can't seem to snap out of it, and we feel like we're facing one of those flamethrower bears all the time. But is there anything we can do about this? Is there anything God can do to take this natural part of our brains and get it under control? In this reading plan, we're going to explore some key truths the Bible gives us about anxiety and fear, which are basically emotional cousins. And we're going to learn some really practical and simple ways to overcome this part of your brain when it gets out of control. So that's the devotional part. And as you heard, if you stick with us through this week and do this devotional with us, you'll, you'll learn some very practical ways to get your brain under control when you're facing anxiety. So now let's read a few scripture that this is going to give to us. Psalm 139, 13 through 14. I have a King James Version. I'm going to change it real quick. Let's do a NIV. So Psalm 139, 13 through 14 says, you were, God, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are so wonderful. I know that full well. I think this verse is just kind of calling back to how God actually created um, us with a, a purpose to, to have those signals and those, those anxious feelings for a purpose to keep us safe because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, Psalm 139, 23 through 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. And I think this is just a prayer that all of us can pray. And I, in fact, I'll pray it right now. God, I just pray that you will God, you'll, you'll search out any anxious thoughts within us and you'll lead us to you and you'll show us the, the path that you're leading us to that will lead us away from anxiety into everlasting and beautiful life. Amen. And then the last verse we have is Psalms 23, 1 through 6, which is a classic. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. 
I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. I love that. I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. If the Lord is my shepherd, I don't have to be anxious about anything. God has my back. He's guiding me to rest and relaxation. He's restoring me. And in verse four, it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I, I don't have to fear for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come from me, which means they protect me. God is fighting for you. Verse five says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.